So do you know that Democrats have been lying to you for years by telling you that the 14th Amendment allows birthright citizenship and the so-called anchor babies? But what more would you expect when we live in a country that is on the brink? And folks, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you like me and you like what we do here. And if you love it, there is more reason to get to The Daily Caller because you can sign up to be a Daily Caller Patriot. There is a link in the description below, so make sure you do that. Okay, so Vivek Ramaswamy, he made an argument that for a while, it's almost been, you know, too taboo to talk about. And that is, the 14th Amendment does not guarantee birthright citizenship. I favor ending birthright citizenship for the kids of illegal immigrants in this country. I've actually read the 14th Amendment. What it says is that all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the laws and jurisdiction thereof are citizens. So nobody believes that the kid of a Mexican diplomat in this country enjoys birthright citizenship. Not a judge or legal scholar in this country will disagree with me on that. Well, if the kid of a Mexican diplomat doesn't enjoy birthright citizenship, then neither does the kid of an illegal migrant who broke the law to come here. And just for a second, I want you guys to watch the irony of this moment. Uh, you have Senator Tim Scott, who explains to the Colombian moderator that the 14th Amendment, it was written about former slaves, right? It wasn't a written about, you know, pregnant migrants who hopped the border and then come here illegally. The fact that when you think of the Constitution and the 14th Amendment, it was certainly written as it relates to slavery, not as it relates to illegal immigration. It's been applied to illegal immigration. So the challenge that we face is, in fact, one that has to do with whether or not the people that come here are under the jurisdiction of our laws. And frankly, if you come here illegally, you are not. I think it's simple that clearly it was designed for slavery and not for illegal immigration. So funny. Anyway, uh, guys, I want to get into the nitty gritty here. And fair warning, you might want a notepad because we have got a lot of facts to cover because I am sick and tired of liberals distorting the Constitution and then trying to get over on conservatives who, who know something's up with their claim and their interpretation, but they don't know why. So the 14th Amendment reads, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. Now, like Senator Tim Scott explained, the amendment was written in part to prevent the government from denying citizenship to former slaves and their descendants. Now, the basis for the current anchor baby interpretation, that actually comes from a 1965 Immigration and Nationality Act, which aimed to bring in more skilled workers and reunite immigrant families, kind of giving the rise to the idea of anchor babies. But nowhere, and I mean nowhere, in the Constitution, does it say that simply being born here means you're a citizen? And how do we know this? Well, we look back to history. So Senator Jacob Howard, he drafted the amendment. He actually gave a speech in which he explicitly states that the amendment was not written to give citizenship to, quote, persons born in the United States who are foreigners or aliens before adding that the amendment was not meant to guarantee birthright citizenship to people who were not under the jurisdiction of the United States. Now, of course, that leads us to the second big question. What does jurisdiction mean? So it likely does not mean geography, which means that the claim that, you know, a person born within the boundaries of the United States is a citizen, that's null and void. And again, we can just look back in history because Pennsylvania Senator Edward Cohen, he raised this exact question when the amendment was being drafted saying, quote, it is perfectly clear that the mere fact that a man is born in the country has not therefore entitled him to the right to exercise political power. He even went on to say that you may have protections under the law if you are born in the United States, but that does not make you a citizen. But let's go even further. Illinois Senator Lyman Trumbull, which by the way, great first name, he said that the phrase subject to the jurisdiction of the United States means, and I quote, not owing allegiance to anybody else. But wait! There's more. All right, so up until now, at least up until this point, I think it is fair for all of us to agree to say that the term jurisdiction does not just refer to the physical borders of the United States, but rather what jurisdiction, as in political allegiance, anchor babies' parents are subject to. So in the case of illegal immigrants, it's the jurisdiction of their native country, right? Now let's look to the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court weighed in on the 1884 case of Elk versus Wilkins. So John Elk, he is a Native American and he is denied the right to vote because the courts rule that he was not a citizen and therefore he did not owe his complete allegiance to the United States since he owed his allegiance to the tribe in which he was born. Now we fast forward 14 years, we go to the Supreme Court 
our case, the landmark case, in United States versus Wong Kim Ark. So Wong Kim Ark, he's born to Chinese parents who are legally residing in the United States. And the court rules that a child born to parents legally residing in the United States is automatically a citizen. Now, this is crucial because the court ruled only on the citizenship of legal parents, right? The Supreme Court has never ruled about the status of a child who is born to illegal parents. And so I think that if we look at these two cases, right, we look at the historical context, right, we listen to what the creator said, there is no legal basis and honestly no factual evidence to support the claim that a child of an illegal migrant is a citizen simply because they are born within the geographical confines of the United States. So kudos to Vivek for being one of the only Republicans who was willing to take honestly such a public hardline approach because that's the kind of, of talk that Republicans need. And speaking of migrants, the Big Apple is asking a judge to modify a 1981 right to shelter decree to make it clear that that law applied for homeless New Yorkers, right? Not thousands of migrants who invade the southern border and then make their way to the city. And it's the same premise here, too, that we just spoke about, right? Eric Adams, a Democrat, he is arguing that that 1981 law was written under an entirely different context, but is now being stretched to fit the current political situation, even though it is clear that that was not the purpose or the intent of the law. So definitely we'll be keeping an eye on that to see how that plays out. And I want to turn our attention to California because there's always something going on there. So Gavin Newsom, he signed a law Thursday that fast food workers will be paid at least $20 per hour. Wow. But did you know that minimum wage laws were at one time unconstitutional because the state was not allowed to tell businesses how to contract with their employees? Look, the fact remains, the free market provides economic opportunity far better than any standard of living the government can give you in a controlled market. Supply and demand has never failed. And so when you hear people, especially, unfortunately, people my age who say, well, capitalism has failed us and that's why we need the government to intervene and, you know, raise the minimum wage for us. Just remember that in a true capitalist society, the free market does all the work, right? Supply and demand is the law of the land. The issue of a low minimum wage, it is not a consequence of capitalism. It is a product of socialism because it wasn't until 1938 when FDR signed the FLSA into law that the first national minimum wage law came into effect. Now, the goal at the time was to stabilize the economy, make sure workers weren't being taken advantage of. But as we know now, those laws never went away. So even as far back as 1938, we were on the brink because up until then, People understood that the government regulating prices was inconsistent with constitutional liberty. And it just reminds us that so much has gone on, right? So much has gone wrong, folks. And it's like a slow decline. So we will definitely have more to talk about because America is just on this perpetual brink to... I don't even want to know. And folks, I just really want to say thank you uh, for everybody who has watched these videos, for people who have liked them, commented on them, subscribed to them. It means so much to me. We are working really hard to give this to you guys. And I, I really appreciate you guys being here. So stick around. We will see you Monday. I look forward to being back with you.